All right, Lindsay, so what video, video games did you play growing up? I was very much into Mario games, actually. I played the very first Mario Brothers game. And, um, you know, even in high school, uh, I was big into like Mario Kart and Mario Party. So I'm kind of a, it's kind of a Mario fan. <laughs> Do you have a memory of playing those games when you were growing up? I just remember we were allowed to play for an hour a day if we wanted to as kids. And I remember like really soaking in that hour and especially my sisters and I would like jump with it. You know, this was pre-Wii. Now you have to like move around, but I think everyone can relate to that like jumping around trying to play the game. <laughs> what are your thoughts on how far orchestral music has come in today's modern video games? I think it's amazing. It makes it a little bit, you know, it makes the arts and uh, orchestra music, which is kind of considered like old school, it's bringing it to the forefront again and making it something that's very accessible to the minds of young kids even. What music has impressed you lately, like this year? You know, I, I know this isn't this year, but I mean, I did Skyrim for a reason and Assassin's Creed. Um, so that's kind of last year. I'm a little late on the, but I just love those tunes. And I loved Journey. I never did the anything with Journey yet, but I thought there were some amazing, you know, outbreaks last year. How open have game developers and the original composers been to what you're doing? You know, I actually met the composer of Journey and, um, it's really cool to see how the worlds are combining everywhere. You know, YouTube, gaming, movies, TV, everything's kind of just conglomming together because of the internet and the accessibility. And, uh, you know, I remember when I met the composer of Journey, it was like a mutual respect. And, you know, talking about working on future projects, I've been, you know, reached out, or people have reached out to me about doing all kinds of projects. So, keep my fingers crossed. How has your YouTube success opened the door for more elaborate music videos and costumes? Ooh, yeah, well at first I was making all my costumes myself, um, but you know, with having a YouTube channel that's successful, it's really fun to be able to actually be like, okay, I have a little bit of, you know, a budget that I can actually spend to make like an Assassin's Creed costume, which was very elaborate, you know, whereas my Skyrim costume made it myself, you know, so it's really fun to be able to do both, making them myself, you know, it puts me into the process, but also being able to do some of the elaborate ones that I couldn't do on my own. What impact do you hope your videos have on getting gamers interested in classical music or picking up the violin? I think that's, that is very interesting to me. I love it that um, at my concerts, a lot of times I'll meet people that come, you know, to the show for the meet and greets and they say how often, you know, or sorry, oftentimes they'll say, oh, I picked up the violin because of you. And that is the biggest compliment I could ever, you know, I could ever get as a musician. Why do you think we've seen uh, such an interest in video game music uh, and video game music live tours like Nintendo has done recently with Video Games Live and continues to do, plus your own tour? Right, well I think there's a certain nostalgia that comes along with video game music because it takes people back to something that is their childhood, you know? They, like people grew up playing Zelda, people grew up playing Mario, and so when they hear these songs, it's like that song represents a big chapter of their life, and so it's very connectable for, for gamers or for even anybody who ever jumped on a video game and played. How did you first come up with the idea to blend your own musical talent with video games and dance? You know, I like I said, I played a little, you know, played some as a kid, but also um, I kept hearing that I looked kind of like a little, you know, elf, and I thought, you know, or even people told me you look kind of like you could be a like a Link, and so I thought to myself, well, I love dress up, I love this music, you know, and um, you know, I'd played the games a little bit, so I decided I would, and Utah's beautiful, so I decided I'd jump around the woods and make my own medley <laughs> of music. Now, were you into cosplay before making video game costumes for these videos? No, it's a, it's a newfound hobby. Uh, I mean, I've always loved playing dress up, but I tell you, video games have the best costumes. So I have so much fun, and I'm so glad that I did get, like, kind of fell into this by accident. How challenging is it to play the violin and dance in costume on location in the snow like you did for Skyrim? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of miserable in the moment. I always have to like smile and look happy. Um, I did the same for Zelda, and I don't think I've ever been more cold on a shoot. The snow was so deep, and it was in my boots, and I literally started crying when I got back into the car just because my hands hurt so bad. But it's always worth it in the end, and um, for the most part, most of it wasn't in the snow, so I was I was okay. How do you go about choosing which game music to adapt for YouTube? 
I take a lot of requests. I also look a lot into what's happening. You know, like I did the Zelda one right before um, Skyward Sword was released. And then also the Skyrim um, theme. Just that one was a lot of people were requesting it. And um, I met Peter Hollins and was like, okay, this is kind of a no-brainer. These two would work together perfectly. So it depends a lot on like what I like, but also, you know, like Assassin's Creed, what's coming out? What's, what are people, what are my fans going to be excited about?